Hi, thank you for tuning in to another episode of CMHA's Keep Connected podcast. CMHA Windsor Essex County Branch podcast is all about mental health and those connections. How do we keep connected? And really, Evelina and I truly believe that it, it is through individuals with lived experience that are able to have that courage to share um, in their journey of recovery, growth, and all the possibilities. So thank you. We are super excited. We're pumped today. We have amazing guests uh, sitting here with me. I have Marcel. Marcel is actually with us at CMHA. He is a youth housing uh, case manager. Mm -hmm. And um, what else can I say about Marcel? I actually, we did a suicide first aid training and that is where I started to kind of just talk to Marcel uh, about mental health and his journey. And Frank Reno is here, retired CFL player from Winnipeg Blue Bombers. You bet. I said it right. <laughs> yes. And Evelina, how are you, my friend? I'm doing well. I'm excited to be here. Thank you, both of you and Jenny. Nice to do another podcast with you. And thank you all for joining us today. Yeah. So, so here's started. the thing, Evelina and, by, Evelina and myself, we both discussed, we did not want to clear it, we did not want to fill the air with our voices. We thought this would be such a wonderful opportunity to talk about men's mental health. And it was a conversation that Marcel and I had probably, what I want to say like six months ago, I don't even remember. Yeah. But you indicated yeah. you wanted to change the narrative mm -hmm. around men's young young, young males. males mental health mental health the narrative around what it means to be a man mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. i've had a lot of struggle with this a lot of guys in my inner circle have had a lot of struggles with this what it means to be an actual man um honestly it's all subjective at the end of the day that's the quickest answer i can give you um Growing up in my culture, African, Canadian culture background, Nigerian background, my dad taught me, you know, don't talk too much. Live by your actions. Do what you needed to be done. Do what's needed to be done. Um, I had two sisters, one older, one younger. I was sandwiched in between them and, you know, arguing a lot. And I couldn't express my feelings a lot because, you know, walk like a man, think like a man, act like a man, talk like a man. And um, that's what made me kind of feel like the narrative should be changed because it silenced me a lot. Mm -hmm. I turned out to be an introvert. Um, this right here is new to me. <laughs> Yay. <You know? laughs> Yay for getting outside of your comfort yeah. zone, Marcel. So I can literally sit here and just stare at the wall and just nod my head all day and feel comfortable with that while you guys speak. That's just me, right? But, you know, it comes to a certain extent where I know my voice needs to be heard on a couple of the things that are happening in today's day and age, especially with young males. So I feel the need to speak on it. Um, so, yeah. I think that's a shared story for a lot of men for like, who are able and willing to open up and talk mm -hmm. about that. Most definitely, most yeah. definitely. Um, I kind of opened up a lot more in my master's degree with social work this last uh, two, three years because Oh, I, I can just imagine. <laughs> you probably oh. had a lot of uh, a lot of friends in yes. the program. Yes, uh, yeah. females, right? <laughs> I never knew it was a girls club, to be honest, right? Um, it was 26 females and I was the only male. Wow. Well, right, wow. in my cohort. And I kind of had to put aside the machoism, masculinity, and kind of get in touch with my feelings. Something that you know I struggled with because to be vulnerable. To be vulnerable. Oh, yeah. And um, I struggle with that a lot, even in my personal relationships. I struggle with expressing my emotions because I've always been taught to take it on the chin, right? Always been taught to take it on the chin and never talk too much. So it was very interesting. Although I did have an undergrad in psychology i still struggled with expressing myself knowing human brain and behavior you know is a lot different right mm -hmm. and actually expressing how you feel and how you think right mm -hmm. um but yeah 
I want to change the narrative. I want more guys to speak out because these are conversations that are needed, right? And I have my partner right here, Frank Reynolds. We've had a lot of conversations the last couple of years in regards to some of the things that could be talked about. A lot of these conversations are, are at the bar. So let's pause. Okay. What are these conversations we need to have a go at? And also, where where have you had these conversations with like other guys? What, like I know you're you're saying that you had the master of social work, and that was yeah. a very you know female oriented kind Most of definitely. a classroom and program. Uh, but what about uh, like male oriented situations you've been in with groups? That, like, was, would that be sports? Would that be? I was just gonna say uh, you played sp- yes, you played mm-hmm. football together. Yeah, right. Frank's you. Let's go. Yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> there you go. Yeah. So talk to me about the culture of um, football. And your story, Frank, as well. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Well, yeah. to, to kind of answer what you were asking about where we speak and have these conversations, um, it's really interesting because we tend to have these conversations in environments that are more comfortable to be vulnerable, such as the gym, when we're out training or at a bar, where we're just in an environment that allows us to be vulnerable, safe, and safe vulnerable. in that moment. Um, and then I could speak similar to Marcel, obviously not the same story by any means, but the same experience just in terms of what it's what it takes to be a man and what the seems to be the common narrative of what it is to be a man. Uh, and I would say pre 2020, because I feel like we're in a shift in the world where mm-hmm. being a man has taken on an entirely new meaning. Um, when I was growing up, uh, I didn't have a father in my in my life or in the picture up until the point I was eight years old. And at that point, that's when uh, I had a stepdad that came into the picture. And to be honest, you know, as a, as a young man, even before that point, I was pretty stubborn. I was, in, I was pretty independent. I was just doing my own thing. And um, I always remember when he came into the picture, I was like, who do you think you are? <laughs> Like, you don't do this. Yeah. You don't get to come into my home. Your and, home. Yeah, your you know, territory. Yeah. Like territory, you, Because yeah. at that point, you were, again, it's that, it's that unspoken culture. It, it's yeah. walk like a man. Mm-hmm. I am the man of the yeah. house. I mean, culturally, in my, in my culture, I'm Portuguese. I mean, mm-hmm. my yeah. dad gets home. Back in the, you know, 20 years ago, it mm-hmm. was... Okay, dad's home. Let's yeah. go to Best the table. Yeah. What yeah. is up for dinner? Yeah. Right? Best behavior, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sorry, I cut you off. No, right? no, so it's continue fine. going, yeah. Um, yeah, and so, you know, I find that there's a like a natural, a natural necessity for there to always be a man and a woman in the home. Or in any in any situation, there's, you know, let's say even with uh with lions, for example, there's the head of the pack and, and you know what I mean? Yeah. There's always some kind of like hierarchy. hierarchy. Yeah. A hierarchy. Yeah. Yeah. Always some kind of hierarchy. Yeah. 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 And and so it's interesting because, you know, as humans, we feel like we're an exception to the rule, but in my opinion, there's no exception. And uh to bring it all back to this idea of masculinity, um, you know, sports really allows us to express ourselves. Um and what I find is that every sport has a very different definition of what it is to be an athlete in that sport. Um, soccer, for example, I can't speak specifically to, um, or hockey or anything like that, but I can speak specifically to football, where it's pretty standard. If you're a football player, you are never vulnerable. And the reason why you're never vulnerable is because if for a moment you allow yourself to be vulnerable, they will come at you with everything they got. Yep. And that speaks to the way the game is played. That speaks to the, the, you know, the chess game, the chess match that goes on behind the scenes. Um, it speaks to in practice. If you allow yourself to be vulnerable, somebody's going to take your spot. Huh. If you allow yourself to be vulnerable, somebody takes your spot, which means that you can't play. So you are not allowed to play. So what mean? What does that mean? As a man, you are less valuable. Yep. And that means that you cannot keep moving on in in climbing the ranks as a football player. But it also starts to define your identity Absolutely. and how you view yourself because Absolutely. the more you get embedded in... So here's the thing. You were speaking about a lot of what mental health, what the culture is of football. Mm-hmm. And I had said, you know, not that listeners want to hear, but yeah, I spent 15 years skating. Mm-hmm. So the culture is very different. Absolutely. But what you're speaking about is when we start playing sports, because sports are phenomenal, mm-hmm. it is so healing, therapeutic. Absolutely. We get to learn who we are. Mm-hmm. We mm-hmm. are with teammates. 
So mm -hmm. that's what gets us in and like yeah. passionate. And if I may add on that. And then what happened? Yeah, so we talk about like habits and, and the truth is that we all develop habits over time in life. And so as you talk about, we find out who we are. This was this struggle, this immense struggle that I personally had um, as this man who had just finished playing football um, for reasons outside of my control. And me being a man who always accomplishes all of his goals, I had a lot of dreams and ambitions and goals in the CFL that I didn't get to accomplish. And so when that, when that opportunity was essentially taken away from me, um, I had this moment of who am I, which speaks to, you know, you talking about this, mm -hmm. we get to find out who we are. Mm -hmm. And we hear it a lot and we don't hear it enough, to be honest, it's starting to come out more. But um, I started asking myself and I reinforce now, who are you before they tell you what you are? And so like football, mm -hmm. football, thank you. Football was a great tool for mm -hmm. me to develop skills that I could use and harness and nurture to become everything that I want to become. Now, football was the tool. It was not the identity. It wasn't everything I am. And so as I, in the beginning of my transition from being a football player to being Frank Reno, I couldn't separate the two. I was Frank Reno, the football player. I always was, always had been. And I'm sure Marcel could attest to that, that we were the football player. Mm -hmm. To add to that, um, football for me, I spoke to Frank the other day um, about this. I don't know if football, I actually had love for the game. Like looking back, I don't know if I had love for football, but I do know it helped me deal with the pain that I was going through during that time. Mm -hmm. Like my dad was in prison at the age of 16, 16 to currently still in prison right now. And there was a lot of pain. I was homeless at the time for six months briefly. A lot of pain, a lot of aggression, a lot of anger, resentment of why life was happening the way it was happening. And football was the only tool that I had or at your that disposal. Tool mm -hmm. that I used mm -hmm. to help manage the pain. And I kind of wanted to feel in control of the pain. So I administered the pain to others. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I used others as my coping mechanism. Mm -hmm. I wanted people to feel actual pain. Mm -hmm. When they were vulnerable on the field, I was ready to apply that pressure because I wanted them to feel what, what I was feeling. Mm -hmm. So again, football was a tool, right? Mm -hmm. And it helped me you know, going to university because I did have a mentor at the time who seen my aggression and he said, you know what, let me channel this aggression. Let's make you a better football player. So again, yeah, just to add to what you were saying. Yeah, mm -hmm. so football. <laughs> it's, it's powerful. It's, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's really neat Absolutely. because it's, uh, you know, as football players, we obviously identified with it a lot. And now that we're on the other side and we have the freedom to speak and share our stories and experiences and, and share tips for people. Um, it's really important to identify that, you know, and I've learned now and it, it'll hit where it hits to everybody individually as you get yeah. there. Um, but you're more than just what you do. You're more than just, you know, what you wear, what you drive, yeah. the house you own. You're more than all those things. And you are, you're an individual, you're a soul, you're, you're a person that is experiencing life. And we all get blessed with different opportunities and, and offerings from people in our life who are merely there to just support us in however, you know, however we can get along in life. And um, for me, you know, my story getting into football was different in terms of the fact that um, I was just a young man without really any guidance. Mm -hmm. And I was just looking for you know, upon reflection, all I was looking for was a little love mm. from somebody. I was like, somebody, please. <laughs> like, honestly, and, and again, you know, yeah, I was like, you know, and as young men, you know, I honestly, I feel like we're all just looking for a little bit of love. And this is where we can talk about, you know, toxic masculinity and what it is to be a man. Mm -hmm. And we're talking about generations upon generations oh, of being yeah. told, oh, yeah. you know, and, and this isn't to blame anybody. This no. is just what it is, right? Yeah. Men were told to never show emotion. So mm -hmm. as a young suck man, suck it up. Yeah, suck it suck up. Suck it right? up. Yeah, and so for me, I was always like, man, I just, 
I need a man to love me somewhere in there. You know what I mean? Yes. And so and it's yeah. like also finding a sense of belonging that's culturally yeah. appropriate. Right. right. Something right. that fits. Something that fits for mm -hmm. a man, right? Mm -hmm. So women, yes. I think I feel like maybe women have more easier mediums to do that. I believe um, so. Yeah. I, I, I'm yeah, guessing. Every, it depends, right? It just depends on uh, your experience. And I find that it, it, what's, what's beautiful is that, it, you know, we don't believe it, but I personally believe and I'll stand by it that everything happens for a reason. Oh, so those people you meet, you know, were they there by accident or was that okay. just, you know, God or whatever you choose to believe as a higher power? Was that their gift to give to you in that moment? Mm -hmm. And so I share that when I was, you know, 13, 14, just seeking for somebody to love me or just, you know, show me that I matter. Um, one of my teachers at the time, he said, Frank, you can you should play football. Mm -hmm. You'd be a great football player. You'll be a big, fat offensive lineman. <laughs> and I said, and, and it's funny and because, like, yeah. yeah, I was like, yeah, I was like, oh. You said I could be that? You saw me? You're talking yeah. to me? You're yeah. talking to me? Yeah. Yeah. You saw yeah. me. Yeah. And so, you know, it, it's interesting. And this, this, you know, mm. carries into this that idea. That gave me, like, goosebumps. Mm -hmm. Because, too, like, you, yeah. like, somebody saw you. Somebody saw and me. all of us just want to be seen. That's Our all. young children, yeah. like, those yeah. youth in school. Yeah. They just ask me to be we seen. We want purpose. We want meaning. Yeah. We want a goal mm -hmm. to achieve. Mm -hmm. And many of us don't have that. No. Mm -hmm. I didn't have it until he scooped me up and saw something in me. I needed that mm -hmm. perfect timing. Right, right? It, the, and everything happens exactly for when it's supposed to for a reason. And mm -hmm. and what makes that so hard to believe is because when something bad happens, we break down and we say, "Why?" Um, and so I always ask myself, and I remind myself that you know, Frank, if you have faith in those great moments, have faith in those dark moments because you know that it always gets better, and you know that it only gets worse when you lose the faith. So there's this common you know practice of faith and and belief will take you to wherever you need to go and so that's why i was blessed you know for somebody to have faith in me mm -hmm. to tell me you know and honestly i don't i don't think that he knew in that moment how much of an impact it made because you know look at me 12 years later i'm yeah. playing professional football and the same teacher that told me he believed in me was watching me play professional football <laughs> bang you know what yeah, i mean that's like really come on now you know so like that's good. beautiful right that's yep. serendipity all these things that are <sighs> it's magic and, you know, we can all say that, ah, well, you know, things happen and whatever. Honestly, the world is full of magic and it's where you choose to put it, mm -hmm. you know, and I put magic inside of myself. I feel that there's magic in the world and I feel that everybody in some way has magic inside of them. And as men, you know, I feel like we don't get to express our magic because, or rather in its full entirety, because we have to hold in pieces of ourselves that are us mm -hmm. and we have to hold them in and we don't have to but we do i was we, just gonna say so again it's based on based on the culture these pressures these yeah. the culture of you know and our experiences it was yeah. so subjective but, but so there's so personal. many different types of cultures so i was even just gonna say culture right. we talk about even work culture i mean yeah. culture and everything yeah, yeah. social media yeah. that's something mm -hmm. we just you know, were kind of discussing also, before you, this right you know marcel you brought up nigerian culture yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. you know there's so many so no wonder things. identity is so difficult right. right sometimes because we're we're, we're yeah. so influenced by all those things right so so when it comes to identity and mental health and facing adversity and being resilient is something you mentioned before. And I don't know, Marcel, if you also agree, it's like being authentic to mm. all of those experiences. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely strength in your struggle. And I think we're sitting here mm -hmm. talking about- I like that, about, strength in your struggle. Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. You know, strength. Frank has gone through a lot. I've gone through a lot. And a lot of people are going through similar situations. And we're being authentic right now. We're, yeah. we're letting it all out. We're telling you that you know, if you can dream, you can achieve type of thing. Mm -hmm. You know, if you continue, you know, putting one leg in front of the other, then, you know, Just you'll get, walking. You'll yeah. get yeah. to your destination type of thing, yeah. right? So Yeah, following, having a vision, maybe following that vision. Well, I would even say, support. you know, it's like speaking to like young men, mm -hmm. you know, like I didn't see myself here Never. 10 years ago. Never. When I was 17, Nothing. I saw myself, honestly, you know, I did have an idea, mm -hmm. right? And we all have an idea. We have a, this Hopefully, vision, yeah. this dream. Um, but you don't have a very clear picture. Like I can't sit here and say, oh, you know, the, the grass is going to be, you know, yeah. 20 feet by 30 feet. Right. You have an idea. And so we all have an idea. We all have a dream. We all have a vision. Um, and it's to have faith that if that vision doesn't happen, quite possibly it means there's something better coming for you. Right. And again, it speaks to faith mm -hmm. and to, you know, to anybody who's listening, who's young and just not sure of themselves and, 
you know, just isn't really sure, you know, why do I feel so poorly? Maybe this isn't for me. Maybe that isn't for me. Um, just have faith that it's going to work out because if it wasn't meant to work out, it doesn't mean that it's not for you. It just means that there's something better coming. Delay and the is moment, not denial. Delay exactly. Is not denial. Yep. You know, and if yep. you stop, you know, I, I think it was uh, Steve Harvey. Um, it was Steve Harvey or Dr. Phil, they're both amazing people. But one of them said, um, if you're going through hell, why would you stop in hell? Keep going. <laughs> and so yeah. keep, keep going. And, keep walking. you know, mm -hmm. we could we could talk about battles all, all day and mm -hmm. talk about, you know, in that moment of pain and discomfort and did we stop? No, mm -hmm. we kept going. And we walked in blind faith that it would all work out. And look at us, we get to sit here and talk faith about it. Faith is key. Like, mm -hmm. Honestly, if I told you that I planned all this <laughs> at the age of 26, you'd be mistaken, man. I'm mm -hmm. telling you, like, I never once thought I'd be a university graduate, mm -hmm. master's. I basically failed grade one. So it's all about faith, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I never, I never would imagine sitting here coming from Jane and Queens, coming from Malton, coming from the hood, and sitting here in Windsor with a great group of people and achieving what I did. It's all about the faith. And I didn't know how it, it was going to happen. Mm -hmm. I didn't have a plan. I was stupid with it. I just did it. But you know? here's the thing. <laughs> you know, and this is my personal opinion. I can't believe I'm going to say this. Oh my gosh, I'm on a podcast. I usually script everything. I'm joking. So here we go. Yeah. So yes, faith is huge. Mm -hmm. But the podcast is all about connections. Yep. Mm -hmm. And wouldn't it be true that you had some human beings in your life mm -hmm. that, whichever to varying degrees, you could count on them, mm -hmm. whether your sister, whether a coach, whether a teacher. What I'm saying is, yes, faith is phenomenal, but human beings we thrive we mm -hmm. are social creatures we Absolutely, need yeah. to be mm -hmm. part of something and mm -hmm. you were you yeah. both football were part team. of your football team yep. yeah. when you both retired when you stopped playing when you got injured mm -hmm. tell me about what happens because for me i lost myself for three years uh, after mm -hmm. i didn't make it figure skating mm -hmm. lost myself mm -hmm. yeah for three years yeah and didn't know okay. who the heck i was yeah mm -hmm. Identity crisis. Right there. <laughs> yeah, Ooh. that was a lot of money in. Um, yeah. yeah, a lot of wasted money and yeah. failed classes at the university for Jenny. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just you lose yourself. I yeah. didn't know who I was. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, we both can talk to it. Being a football player for what, probably eight years, and then you go to the CFL Combine, you go to the East West Bowl. And it's your last season and injuries do happen. Dislocated yeah. elbow, high ankle sprains, and your damaged goods, yeah. right? Hmm. Identity crisis, boom. You're not getting drafted. What next? <laughs> what I did was I applied to do my master's, but it was a backup plan. Okay, said, that's you know awesome. What? You you know, we, we are not equipped with backup plans as football players. Okay, that's my question. Yeah. We are taught. Do, were you, are you taught? It's 100% no. in. You, here's the thing with no. football. Not at all. This is, this is the culture of football. Two feet in. Two feet in, you Two have hands, to have the whole body. Head. You can't, yeah. you can't <laughs> really? leave anything behind. And yeah. the truth is, and I'll speak to my experience, and, you know, I, was, I had the, the, the blessing of making it to the CFL. And I had the blessing to experience so many different levels of football. Um, and I had the blessing of experiencing something I wasn't ready for. And it mm. taught me something about life. Nobody cares what you did. All that matters is what you do. Yep. And so what we, what made, you know, what made it so hard for me, and I can guarantee that any football player watching this will understand that in that moment, whatever moment where it comes, I don't know where it comes from, but yeah. in that moment where you realize like, pardon my language, but oh shit, I'm not a football player anymore. Mm -hmm. I can't put on those pads anymore. I can't do this anymore. Life changing. Life changing. Yeah. And, and, you know, I can't speak from Marcel's perspective. I can only speak from my own. But I had the most crumbling experience in my life. And this speaks to this whole idea of, you know, mental health. I trained my body so hard. And all this time, I never knew that there was another part of me, another muscle that I needed to train, which was my mind. Mm -hmm. Yep. And football was amazing because in some ways it prepared me for the battles I was about to go through, mm -hmm. 
but in other ways it never prepared me at all. Amen. And the reason why is because a lot of people around me weren't prepared for that battle either, which is completely fine. Mm -hmm. We are not ready for battles that we weren't for, put yeah. through. Oftentimes those things are, I mean, that's what we call trauma. Like yeah. Sometimes, yeah. Right? Yeah. So that's, yeah. we're not prepared. It, yeah. We're out of control. There's nothing yeah. we could do. Our yeah. normal coping does not work. No, no, no you yeah. were we survival. Can't. You, yeah. I, you yeah. can't. So yeah. it's like flip everything upside down. Yeah. Right now. Not only that, like yeah. our professors, maybe our coaches are not equipped with the knowledge nowadays. Well, nowadays it's changing. Mm -hmm. Is it? Yeah. Are they coaching Slow, more about like yes. identity future but even, after football or Even no? the culture no. you were mentioning. So, so going on with, okay, no vulnerability on the field. You're, you're going, you know, you see someone vulnerable, you take advantage of that by causing, you know, inflicting pain in the game yeah, and being yeah, really yeah. good at that. So, I'm assuming coaches also promote that. Also, so what are happens? You injured with, or are you hurt? So, oh yeah, yeah. So are you injured or are you hurt? What does that mean? What does that mean? Are you, you injured? injured? Are you injured or are you hurt? Are you injured? Do you need to ice up and get some support on the sidelines, mm -hmm. or you're out two, three weeks, mm -hmm. or are you hurt? That means you can go back in and mm -hmm. continue to play. Mm -hmm. We have a goal right now, and the goal is to win. <laughs> and if you're not supporting that goal, then sit on the sideline. Then side you don't line. matter. What happens if you sit on the sideline and you're and, on the game? Then you're forgotten. You're forgotten about. Yeah, they Dangerous. know the truth is. and, and So know, what answer do you give? Yeah, <laughs> that, that, well, that's the thing. That's the What's thing. You know, sad, once I, right? once you understand that, like, it, 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 we speak to the culture. And again, like, mm -hmm. just to be clear, we're not bashing. No, no, no. We're like, no, yeah, no, just, just trying to yeah, understand. We are just trying to right? like, <laughs> I'm so thankful for football. Like, I'm just We are talking about this. just the reality. This is more applicable than just football. It's other sports. I was going to say, I, 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 yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, the OHL. So I get to work alongside some of the OHL teams mm -hmm. that I talk to the kids, the youth, you know, the young men, and they say the same thing. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's not bashing hockey and the culture. No. It's it's just sports. Isn't that why it's, we're here, though? You know what I mean? Yeah. So that we can, because Be us, saying, yeah. us saying, like, you know, this isn't bashing football or anything, that's under the, the idea that somebody out there is going to, you know, judge us for saying that. But again, I feel like we need to be uh, begin to create a world where if somebody expresses the truth of how they feel about a situation. It doesn't devalue that no. at all. It just it, it explains the reality of mm -hmm. what's going on, because honestly, like we individually and as friends and mm -hmm. teammates have hit a lot of things that have caused us pain in our experiences in football. And I could imagine in any sport, Everybody has hit something or in any experience, whether you're in a sport or a club or whatever, Happy. you're hiding some kind of pain for fear of being vulnerable, for fear of not being included in a place where you want to be included. Let's speak on that. Let's speak on when we're injured and we're forgotten about. Yeah, that yeah. could... Let's that, speak on... Yeah not having the goal in mind anymore with the, the common goal with the team. so yeah. identity linked to because you mentioned like it's like i learned who frank was like frank right not the football player after right. just frank right? right so so after like because your your whole body's in this whole not just two feet yeah. it, your whole mm -hmm. body mm -hmm. so your identity is related so closely to football, football. you become injured yep. that changes yep. what happens and so, and so goal is to fix your like so let's yeah, let's let's tend to those injuries. Is right. to fix your injuries. So, so how does back on that field. how are you supported as a football uh, injured football player? Mm. How are you? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, honestly, you're not, you're not. There's no one babysitting you. You're yeah, a grown you're man. Yeah, right? <laughs> you're a grown man. Yeah. yeah. So there's no one sitting there cuddling you. How are you feeling today? Nah. Yourself. Yeah. I understand you're going through a lot. Um, talk to me. You, There's no, no one like that. You tend to be, um, honestly, be you they, they they treat you as a an object, as a pawn. Mm -hmm. And you are a pawn that if you are not capable of playing chess, mm -hmm. then they throw you in the garbage and they make a new pawn. Um, and, the, and it's just the truth of the matter, right? Mm -hmm. um, I, I speak to, you know, in my experience being in the CFL, um, I was a very valuable piece of the team until the moment I... I blew up my knee and I could see it in the eyes of the coaches the difference before the game and after where they couldn't tell me but you could see it on their faces that I didn't matter anymore come on and it's it's true it's, that it's sounds business. like you just it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a feel it's it's, you feel it too it's, it's, like, it's, it's a business that sounds it like happened. it's beyond disappointment uh, it's you know, not it's even just, a disappointment it's, one of those, it's just like they're not yeah. just disappointed it's just like uh, it's over. It, you know, yeah, you just kinda, it's just like yeah. the it's final, like... And it's not sucks okay. to suck. Yeah, uh. and it, it's not to say, like, just in the CFL, like, in some in some fashion, right, 
when I was in university, when I tore my ACL in university, I, and again, I'm so thankful for the people that supported me in you know, getting my surgery. I was very fortunate. I had surgery three months after I tore my ACL, which takes people years after. And wow. I had it so fast and I'm thankful. Um, but again, I speak to the truth of the game that if I didn't work as hard as I did and recover as fast as I did, nothing, nothing, they there, wouldn't have, it wouldn't, they, it wouldn't have mattered. I wouldn't have been a value to them because I was only supported because of what I did on the field. It's, and that's, it's achievement and performance driven. Yes, yes it is very achievement and that's okay. That's, it's part yeah. of the game. But this is to say to athletes, don't forget mm -hmm. that your value is more than mm -hmm. what you do on the football field. Mm -hmm. And that's where. Once I finished playing football, it was so powerful, so powerful for me to not, to not step away from the game necessarily, but to embrace the things and the tools that I learned from playing. So I realized, I said, Frank, you went to the CFL. Why do you feel so shameful about that? When you went to the CFL from a place where you start, your football team in high school had like 13 guys on the team. <laughs> And then you went to university and your university football team was probably the worst football team in the, in, in the country. For three years. For three only. years. For only. three only. years? Yeah. Oh, you had the worst football team. Not to mention you were drafted in the eighth round without going to a draft or to a combine, without doing any testing, mm -hmm. solely based on somebody had faith in you because of the effort you put in. So let me take all of these mm -hmm. things and remind myself that, Frank, you are not a football player. You are a hard worker who never quits. There you go. You are a hard worker you who are, never quits. I am. I am. I am. I am. And it, You're changing the narrative. Yeah, and I am more than just a football player. I am a brother. I'm a. I'm <sighs> a friend. Cool. I'm a. I'm a mentor. You know, I'm a business owner. I. I'm a, all these things. I am not just a football player. Yeah, seeing yourself in a different light is mm -hmm. so powerful. Mm -hmm. And s seeing myself as a professional, not a professional football player. But a youth supportive housing case manager is like, oh, you know, it has a little ring to it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, what I'm saying? Like, yeah, you know exactly. it's so powerful. And, Aww. you know, seeing that and achieving that is just, it's, it's weird. It's just weird. Mm -hmm. Every day I'm just like, wow, okay, I'm not a football mm -hmm. player. I still have the football mentality, mm -hmm. right? right? And most things I you do. You can take those tools, right? You learn. Yeah. Taking those football. tools, again, what you were saying, and mm -hmm. just applying it to other aspects of my life. Mm -hmm. and I think that's important to note. Whatever we do that we commit to, whatever, whether that's a relationship, whether that's a sport, that is really hugely part of our lives. Whether that works out or doesn't work out, we we always, the lesson here is that we always wanna learn a lesson from that because oh. that has, we can't just forget that. That doesn't, it's not like we could just dismiss that, no. right? So those lessons, you're sharing those lessons that you've learned. And I just wanna mention that someone's going through adversity, difficult situations in their life, take those lessons, take those things that mm -hmm. you have learned, those mm -hmm. strengths, everything that is building your resilience to, to overcome new challenges and using mm -hmm. those skills in new situations. That's, I feel like the lesson here. So mm -hmm. that's huge. It is. Most and, you know. and the big thing from myself when I think about sports, predominantly sports that are like football, hockey, um, where there is a culture of achieve, achieve, do, do, do mm -hmm. performance. Mm -hmm. I would love and I don't know, maybe you too, because anything is possible here. What if you established or we established in Windsor a curriculum that we go into sport organizations and you start young and you train their mind. You mm -hmm. exercise yeah. their mind as we exercise their bodies. We mm -hmm. connect the two because I get you mm -hmm. this. If we come at it from a business perspective you tell anybody if somebody who is able to train their brain right their mind and also physical you put those two together and that person is going to be mm -hmm. fierce that's mm -hmm. needed that's most yeah. definitely needed um you know being on the football team we always get motivational speakers and everything oh yeah okay yeah, we, we get people who have succeeded mm -hmm. we don't get the individuals that's different though yeah. you're not getting individuals with no success. No success. B based on based on the the expectations on that expectation you know of football mm -hmm. success. Mm -hmm. So yeah, your mentors are like, okay, this is what you want to strive for, but like, what about those other individuals on the team that could relate with someone else? Right. Yeah. Exactly. Like that's not right. what I relate yeah. to, right? Not like, everyone's going to be a football player. Exactly. Right? There's life after football. Exactly. Right? <laughs> yes. So we don't yes. get conversations yeah. like that. That'd be a game changer for so mm -hmm. many because. And I and I I'm telling you, it I lost myself for three years, my mm -hmm. whole identity. 
was being a competitive mm -hmm. figure skater. And uh, nobody <laughs> told me that, well, you're nothing now, Jenny. Yeah. Just go to school. You yeah. didn't make it. Yeah. There's no Olympics. There's no tryouts. You just, you're done. Yeah. So we're up until like, I think four months ago. That's the first time I said I retired. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> Honestly, because yeah. everyone's yeah. seen me as a football player. Yeah. Someone actually stopped me and said, you know, how's football? I'm like, I retired. <laughs> so good. Yeah, so to, just to yeah. add to what you were saying, it's, it's funny. Mm -hmm. It's funny. And that transformation, and then we talked about language, and, and something you mentioned, Frank, before was, okay, so when we put out, and like people's perception of us or their judgments of us, how not to take that personally, and how to, mm -hmm. uh, what's what do you think people like to see do you think it's that oh you know i've gone through hardship i want to i relate to that hardship or do you think they relate to more that oh you know this person is doing well so i want to i want to you know take that energy on so what kind of feedback do you guys get like do you what do you do you find that people are like oh it's just too bad that you're retired and whatever or that's great what are you doing now you know like what, how, what mm. kind of feedback do you get well <laughs> the truth is is that nobody cares about you unless you're doing something that matters. Mm -hmm. And so I'm not a professional football player anymore. I'm okay with that. Yeah. I know that my life matters regardless of whatever anybody feels about what I say. Now, being somebody who chooses to observe a lot for the reason that I like to grow and take lessons from a lot, I started realizing that... Um, I have a lot less value to people because I'm not a professional football player and that's completely fine. And I understand that it is because sometimes you are a, as an individual, your accomplishments and what you are, are a lot of, you will, the things you do will be, other people will take it as they did it. Like a reflection of their a own success, even though they've so, done nothing. Right. And, and here's the thing, this isn't, yeah. right. and this oh, isn't to bash yeah. anybody, but no, this, is, no. this is the human reality of human nature yes. of, yeah. look, you know, if there's a successful football team, notice how a lot of people will flock to the successful football team. And at the moment where the successful football team crumbles, people are out. Mm -hmm. And so this is where I encourage you to remember that be mindful of the people that stick around you through thick and thin because those are the people that matter. And not that anybody else doesn't matter, but just those who matter. And there's one individual that we always seem to forget as stuck with you through thick and thin, which is yourself. Yeah, yep. I'm so and, glad that you said yep, that. Yep, yep, yep. And I think, you know, you know, we sit here and we can all agree on that, but there's a lot of people, and you know, it took me a long time to recognize, you know, as a young man growing up, I, you know, I'm so alone. I have you know, nobody's there for me. And, and, you know, as I'm an older man now who can take care of myself um, in any capacity, I realize that, like, Frank, you were there. You were going through, yeah, you know, give myself one of those, you know. And once you can understand that, like, you're going to be okay. You know, you got it. You know, and again, having faith, having faith, you're going to be good, allows you to, to, to see yourself as a victor, not a victim of your circumstances, mm -hmm. right? And so, yeah, we got to understand that, you know, just because you've changed your identity or just because you've moved on or just because you're not who you thought you were, it doesn't mean you aren't something of value. Yeah. You know, if anybody out there who doesn't feel good or, you know, is going through those, those shitty moments of, you know, my life is worthless, my life has no value, remember that, you know, you were gifted with something. You were gifted with something. And if you don't believe that you were gifted with anything, remember that if you're standing here today, that means you went through something and you made it. Yeah. You went through something and you were strong, which means that you've been gifted with resiliency. Mm -hmm. You've been gifted with mm -hmm. tenacity. You've been gifted with strength. And to discredit or devalue the fact that you could overcome anything to make it to this point where you could at least sit here and even though you're sulking, just remember that you have gifts. And as you continue to move forward and have faith and believe that it might be a shitty day, but it's not a shitty life. Yeah. It's a mm -hmm. shitty moment, but mm -hmm. it's not a shitty forever. Exactly. And mm -hmm. you have the power, you have the power as a victor of your life to take control. And it might not change in a day, mm -hmm. might not change in a week. But I can speak from experience that at one point I was suicidal and I wanted to finish. Mm -hmm. Or so I thought. Yeah. Maybe I was just finding out that I needed to, you know, just remind myself how strong I am mm -hmm. and move forward and remember that, you know, a year ago, I was suicidal, but today, 
I'm ready to fight whatever fight I need to fight and I'm here for it. You know what I mean? So yeah. Well, I'm glad you're still here, Greg. Yeah, I appreciate yeah, it. Thank and you. thank you so much for <laughs> no having problem. both of you, for having the courage to openly speak to us about football, about sports, about ideas. These are some hard, hard. Mm. Um, we forgot about ego, though. We forgot oh, about we ego. We did talk about the ego. Yeah, we didn't like talk that. about it. I said that I wanted to go there. I so like let's that. talk yeah. about the ego. You want to start us off? Yeah, so start us off. We've had conversations specifically about the ego. Yeah, so. I know, because yeah. Marcel is like, no, we need to speak about, yeah. The ego is killer. But at the same time, it's a double-edged sword. Yes, It got it you is. to where you are today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But at mm -hmm. the same time, it can finish you in an instance. Boom. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of males have an over-inflamed ego, right? <laughs> they don't like to talk about their feelings. Yeah, it's true. Right? Again, I was in a class full of females, 26 of them, not a single male. So... I was harassed with feelings. Right? <laughs> <laughs> that's how you determine. All right, okay, let's, let's change the term. No, but that, I, I see what you uh, mean. You were yes. probably overwhelmed, maybe. You like, were bombarded. Yes. There were feelings bombarded. everywhere. Okay, the, were bombarded <laughs> with feelings. And uh, it probably felt like harassment, though, because I feel a lot. Yeah. Especially well, social work. I know. I mean, my ego was like, attack, 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 attack. <laughs> but. I had to control that and I sat back and I opened you up. You ever ask yourself, like, why was your ego saying attack, right? What about that habit you developed from playing football, I that would, survival oh, tactic? But right. again, right. everything is survival. Yeah. And I think us males, Vulnerability, we, do have, especially. Yeah. we have a mental block on feelings. I, I don't know what it is. We It's so icky. It's like, you don't <laughs> well, want yeah, to, well, let me add to that, talk right? about that. So, and I'll just, I'll just share that, like, the ego is, is like, a, it's like a superhero. It's like that little that little voice in your head that says, hey, man, don't worry, I got you. I'll figure it out, right? Mm -hmm. And so when we talk about the ego, we talk about that identity that we create that gets us through all those hard days. And mm -hmm. that, it, you know, to survive, the ego gets built. Mm -hmm. And I believe that there comes a time in your life where you need to sit with your ego and have a conversation. Like, listen, buddy, we don't need you like we used to. We don't need to survive the way we survived before, mm -hmm. you know? It's time to get, it's time to recreate, you know, it's time to, you know, I call it like getting in a new vehicle. Mm -hmm. the, the vehicle of survival is no longer the vehicle that will take me to that next right. step. And mm -hmm. you have to, you know, I had a moment where I had to sit with my ego, you know, um, specifically, you know, a year ago when uh, I started be coming out of my deep depression and starting mm -hmm. to like discover myself, mm -hmm. um, you reach a point where you know, you're trying to find what you're going to do. And your ego, again, is your protector. It protects you. And so my ego came out strong and said, I'm here to protect you and lead you to victory. And I began doing things that were very not who I am, mm -hmm. which is completely strange. But it's interesting because as I sit here being vulnerable, vulnerable about it, it allows me to understand more that like, I'm more than just this Frank going through life. I'm mm -hmm. somebody experiencing emotions, feelings, yeah. da, da, da. So this ego wants to protect you from, from failing. And so it pops up. And like I said, it's really important as men that we understand that like we need to sit down and talk with that part of ourselves. Mm -hmm. It's a part of you, not its entirety, but it will become an entirety to save you because that's what it took to get you to this yeah. point. Right. Yeah, a lot of us are playing backseat to our own lives or passenger seat and we're mm -hmm. driven by our ego mm -hmm. a lot of us yeah, and we all it's have a default it, right? it's a default yeah. it's a it's a safety mechanism right it's yeah. uh it's mm -hmm. the it's the pc that says hey don't worry even to you know women men and women it says don't worry i'll you know i'll figure it out and the ego isn't always confidence and you know you know beating your chest but the mm -hmm. ego might just be you know when things go south, maybe it's like, you know, I cower because yeah. that's safety, right? That's mm -hmm. my safety. It's survival yeah. mechanism. Right? It's survival, survival mechanism, yeah. right? And, and that's, I think, where mindfulness comes in because you mentioned the passenger seat, backseat, or the ego's kind of driving it and it, helpful, but sometimes it, it doesn't get us in good situations. No. Mm -hmm. and, and sometimes, like, if we're not aware of it, we're not, not thinking about it, of why we're doing certain things. Uh, oftentimes, it's, 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 you know, we're looking backwards, right? Mm -hmm. and, 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 yeah, and not absolutely. making those decisions ourselves, right? But, I mean, we brought up ego because I think in a lot of sports, we train our ego. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It oh, is. Yeah. We, we have <laughs> to. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, in order to train that part, 
It's like, oh yeah, right? Like, yeah. it's like you're invincible. Mm -hmm. Like I had the like, mental visualize it. Okay, mm -hmm. I rock, I'm awesome, mm -hmm. I'm Okay, and then I fall on my on my ass when I'm figure skating. And then I'm like, wait a minute, what happened? All the visualizations, yeah. everything mm -hmm. I did. And then my coach is like, oh my gosh, right? right? The, what happens, right? With our ego, when we are in something like a sport and we attach our identity to that mm -hmm. you both spoke about a super costume mm -hmm. a costume when yeah. you were both sitting here you both mm -hmm. said and eh, when we're all suited up for football that is, that's our armor mm -hmm. that's our cape that's our costume mm -hmm. so it's almost like a shield it's yep. protecting you you feel safer you learn how oh, yeah. to feel safe yeah. oh yeah so you strip all that off yeah and Who you're left you? with an ego yeah right that's scary yep. yeah right we're it's it's vulnerability yeah but you, hey frank yeah you got through it absolutely yeah we all do yeah. and we we spoke about resiliency and a really good reminder that every single human being we are all born with intrinsic resiliency. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And some of us are able to access it earlier, quicker. Yep. We all have experiences in our lives, right? Mm -hmm. To varying degrees. Um, and that's that's the thing about not judging a, a book no, by its cover. Like, please you have don't no judge. idea what a person has gone through. Oh my God. Sometimes individuals like in the sports world and stuff, maybe it's more public. Maybe it's yeah. public yeah. Of, of what's happened, but you know, you can't ever assume someone's been through one mm -hmm. thing or another. You just don't know. Or, or that they've never been through any adversity because yeah. I hear that a lot too. But until you hear someone's story, you don't know. Which, and that's why it's yeah. important hearing both of your stories. Mm -hmm. And for any of our viewers listening in, especially <laughs> young males, um, do me a favor, like really important. Um, I love sports. Sports is a catalyst for training our brains as well. Mm -hmm. I do believe it. It's a comfort, yeah. It's team building. Mm -hmm. it, it promotes a lot. What I will add is I think we need to have that shift in the culture of preparing athletes to succeed in their sport, mm -hmm. but also talking about plan B, C, D, E, or F. Mm -hmm. It cannot be the only defining part of you. Mm -hmm. Because I am super awesome without skating, mm -hmm. as you are. Thank you. Retired. <laughs> retired, right? Ooh. And I think that's what we have to start. And and I went, geez, I'm 40. It took me a long time to get here. And that's, and that's important to know, too. This doesn't happen over one day. I, that's what I was going to say. You know? it's a yeah. journey. It's a, yeah, exactly. It's this a journey. has been like a 20 year journey, mm -hmm. right? And now I'm able to talk back when I was 18, yes. 16, yes. 17, 18. Yeah. So thank you both for coming you. on to yeah, this podcast. Are there any last words that you would like to tell any viewers or anyone listening? In? Um, life is a journey, right? Um, compare yourself to who you were yesterday and not so, who to someone who, let me say that again. <laughs> compare yourself to who you were yesterday and not to someone is today. Life like is a journey. It. It's, um, it's a marathon. Um, it's not a race. It's a different type of marathon. It's your marathon. Compare yourself to yourself. Your life is too complex to compare yourself to anyone else other than yourself. Mm -hmm. And I wish I told myself that years ago me too right. don't compare yourself to others please yeah. mm -hmm. frank um i mean if i were to say anything to little frank 10 years ago i'd just say uh be kind to yourself nobody gives you a book on life and just enjoy every moment because it becomes a memory eventually so enjoy it love it you were both so you you filled my heart with um warm fuzzy feelings i'm feeling very inspired by both of you um and i think evelina and i talk about it all the time when we are facilitating a lot of webinars and trainings we talk about being authentic getting to know yourself it is truly through being vulnerable mm -hmm. sitting down with yourself asking yourself questions who am i what are we going to do and here's the thing i think this is the secret nobody tells us okay not to know what you're going to do mm -hmm. i never ask kids what do they want to be mm -hmm. i don't give a crap you mm -hmm. know why because life we know ain't it funny mm -hmm. it's just like what? and and also jenny just to mention i hear a lot of kindness and compassion from both of you for mm -hmm. yourselves for other people mm -hmm. uh, i i just feel that fostered so much maybe just through your experiences so if mm -hmm. you don't know what you want to do if you're struggling 
remember to be compassionate towards yourself, be compassionate towards other people. It's really going to be a huge tool for mm -hmm. getting you through all this. We don't yep. have enough of that in the world. Uh, we don't. And you both did your okay, the shoulder pads. Do me a favor, anyone listening, if you didn't <laughs> see that and you're just listening uh, audio, uh, self compassion, yep. uh, touch. Frank brought up a really phenomenal point. You will be with yourself for the entirety. Mm -hmm. Talk to yourself kindly. Treat yourself kindly and care for yourself. You don't have anyone to give you a hug. Give, give yourself. yourself a hug. Mm -hmm. We just by touching hand on heart, you will release those hug hormones. Makes you feel good. Pat yourself. We are able to do that for ourselves. And if you need anything else, please don't hesitate, reach out, reach out. There are so many wonderful organizations, communities, um, and partners here in Windsor, Essex County. So if you um, need any help, please contact us at 519-973-4435. Thank you both so much. Thank you. And my fellow co-host, thank you. Okay.